lap and the race will be back on. Yeah, Oliver G uh, Gavin has uh, once again led a Grand Prix. He's been doing quite a lot of that in the safety car this year. Mika Hakkinen warming his tyres up, weaving round the circuit in the big Mercedes goes Gavin and the rest of them closing up behind him. Not quite in line astern, but not very far off it. And the race is going to restart, and the race restarts now. In goes the safety car. Hakkinen leads up into turn one. Schumacher right behind him. Fisichella, Barrichello, and then John Lacy. Eddie Irvine is sixth. Fredson is seventh. Ralph Schumacher's got Damon Hill right behind him. And everybody's gone away safely this time. It's Schumacher challenging Mika Hacken, and he's going to give him a hard time right from the beginning. And he's going, that's, that's where he got a penalty last year under a yellow flag. He's all right this year. And he's really harrying Mika Hakkinen. Is the Finn going to be able to resist the pressure? And the answer, I think, is going to be no. Schumacher. But Schumacher's going to lead. He's right in front now. Schumacher Hakkinen fights back. And through goes Fissi Keller and Barry Kello. That was a bad move by Schumacher, but you can't blame him for trying. Yes, uh, Barrichello's not going to make that stick, but Schumacher went very deep into the corner. If you look at the angle of his rear wing, he's obviously elected to run low downforce, and that's why he's so fast in a straight line to give him a lot of overtaking capacity down the two straights. So, but it didn't quite pay off. When he got there, he hadn't got enough grip, hadn't got enough downforce, and ran wide. But he'll come back. Uh, look, he's been part of that. Uh, he, did, he, he was testing downforce in both cars in the warm-up this morning. And that's the Benetton of Verts off, running wide in the Gossa curve. Verts losing four or five places. Uh, he should be able to recover from there. Shouldn't be any long-lasting damage. Well, now Ralph, Michael Schumacher has got to get past Fissi Keller again because the Italian is sandwiched in the Benetton between the Ferrari of Michael Schumacher behind him and the McLaren of Mika Hakkinen in front of him. And now, once again, Michael Schumacher is weaving and dodging to try and get past the car in front. This time it's Fissi Keller and Mika Hakkinen is making the most of his opportunity to try to break away. Here comes Schumacher again. Look at the straight line speed he's got, but Fisichella covered it well. Now Fisichella's going to run wide. Schumacher coming up the inside, makes it stick. Schumacher's gone for straight line speed, and it looks as if it's going to pay off. Nice one, Michael. Up into second position in the Ferrari. Now, can he catch? Can he get past Mika Hakkinen? Down to third goes Fisichella. Still a magnificent fourth. It's Rubens Barrichello ahead of Jean Alessi, who started second on the grid. Eddie Irvine in the second Ferrari is in sixth position. Mika Salo is out of the race after that coming together and they're working together on Pedro Deniz's car as well. Something to do with the steering. I think over the line goes Mika Hakkinen. This is lap six out of 71 getting on to one tenth distance already. Hakkinen two tenths of a second faster on that lap. Really you have to say like for like, they've been seven, eight tenths a lap uh, faster than the, than the uh, Ferrari all weekend. So Hakkinen now getting into his stride. Schumacher still there, menacing as ever. Coulthard apparently, we understand from the F1 ITV pit crew, is not reporting any problems. He's up to 14th place. Yeah, and uh, 14th position is where he started, of course. He's got it all to do now. Lap six out of 71. And coming out of the Gersa curve come the leaders, Barrichello and Matt Schumacher. Well, we've got the Benetton crew out in the pit lane. Presumably that's for Vert, who we saw bouncing across the gravel. So Benetton boys expecting one of their cars to come in. And uh, we understand it is definitely for Alexander Vert. There's Salo. Remember, sixth place on the grid. A great drive in the wet qualifying. Out of the race already. Ah, but look at this. Schumacher now has clawed his way up to the rear wing of Mika Hakkinen's McLaren again. Nearly. It's a couple of cars late, but he's much closer. And those two are pulling away from Fisichella. The fastest man on the track is Michael Schumacher. And he's just gone round in 1 minute 14.8, compared with the lap record of 1.11.8. And, of course, they've still got a comparatively heavy fuel load even in this race which is going to be a series of sprints we're expecting one tire stop possibly two Ooh, schumacher seriously late on the brakes there michael schumacher really on an incredible charge uh, six tenths of a second faster than hacken on the last lap and look at him in the strip slipstream already and uh, mika covering the line michael's going to try the outside again i don't think you'll get away with it this time but he's tucking back in 
And he's going to try and come through on the inside. Remember, he's got this low downforce. If he can stay with Hacken until they come out of turn eight at the start of the finish straight, he will be in a good position to sprint past at the for turn one at the start of the eighth lap. They're coming through on lap seven now. And Schumacher pushing, pushing, pushing. The red Ferrari big in the mirrors of the McLaren. Now, this is the Jochen Ritt curve. Then there is the A1 curve. Now, this is where Schumacher can attack if he's close enough. He's not close enough at the present moment, though. Watch him. It'll be really, really late breaking by both of them. He's too far behind, Murray. He won't come in from that, uh, that distance behind. But again, three tenths of a second faster on that lap. Remember, there's an appeal tomorrow over the Silverstone debacle at the end where Schumacher won the race when he went through the pit lane and served his penalty after the race had finished. That happens tomorrow. There may be a points reversal. Somehow I doubt it. So Michael Schumacher's got a race for it today and Hakkinen defending his world championship lead. Yeah, it's a three-car race at the moment. Hakkinen, Schumacher and Fisichella who's hanging on well. And Fisichella is some four seconds ahead, five seconds ahead of Rubens Barrichello, who's hanging on magnificently in the skirt. This is Fissi Keller, pole position holder in the Benetton with the Playlife V10 engine. And you can see the gap now between himself and double world champion Michael Schumacher. There he was as Hackenden accelerates out of the corner. Tremendous stuff, this. And we are now on the one-tenth distance lap of just over one tenth distance. We're on lap eight out of 71 as they exit the turn. There is the start and finish grid. Now, this time Schumacher is a bit closer, but not close enough still. He needs to be right under the rear wing of Mika Hakkinen, and he's getting closer, but that was on Hakkinen's braking. Obviously, Hakkinen being in front had to break just marginally earlier than Michael Schumacher. Well, it would be easy to say that they're on different fuel strategies, but the difference between a two stop and a one stop is only about 15 kilos, say 20, 22 litres of fuel. So I really don't think that's the reason why Michael's homing in. I think he's just really attacking the course harder than Mika Hakkinen at this stage of the race. Tremendous pressure. That Here he goes again. He'll, uh, Mika covering the line. He's sort of pretty much putting it down the in, uh, middle of the track. I thought Michael might have a stab up the inside there. I think uh, Hakkinen second guessed him very well there. Now, bad luck for Rubens Barrichello. He was running fourth. He's come into the pits. We haven't seen why. We're concentrating on this battle for the lead, obviously. And what a battle. The two world championship contenders, they've both won four races this year. And Rubens Barrichello retires from the Austrian Grand Prix after a terrific start from fifth position after running in fourth place. Very, very disheartening for the team. And his teammate Jos Verstappen is in 13th place over the line. Now Schumacher is a bit closer this time, but it's the it's the run up from turns five to three that uh, ro turns two to three that Schumacher attacks, and they're approaching turn two now. So watch out for another try by the German. I tell you, if Michael ever gets his breaking point slightly wrong, he's going to hit the back of Hakkinen so hard. He is really totally committed to those braking areas. Now, this is it. This is where Schumacher goes for it. Coming down to turn three, they're doing 185 miles an hour here. He dodges and dives and weaves and turns, but Hackenden knows exactly what's happening. He can put his car in exactly the right place. Out of the Gersa curve, down to the Louder curve, 170 miles an hour. You can see Fissi Keller, he's got a washing brief there. He's doing the best he can, and he is now 1.4 seconds behind this battle.